Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to analyze the allocation with respect to 5G spectrum, the concept of 5G, what are the pros and cons of it, the challenges related, the health and environmental concerns related as well as the way forward. And in the last of the segment, a means based question has been formulated for you to practice. Let us begin with the various topics that we are going to cover under this particular segment. These are the many topics that I have already recited and these are the topics that we have to go through specifically from the perspective of GS mains paper 3 and of course from the perspective of prelims the factual information is important. So 5G spectrum bid has been completed in 7 days and it has been a miracle according to the government because earlier that they thought that it would only take 3 days for the bid to get completed and what next is in the what next is in the offing with respect to 5g now basically if we talk about 5g like we have one generation two generation three and four generation of internet we have the fifth generation of mobile network by the name of 5g now it is designed to connect virtually everyone that means internet of things is possible with high frequency of internet provided to us that will go from machines to objects and devices and even they will continue to communicate amongst themselves in such a manner with the help of high frequency network that they can assist humans for better efficiency. High brand spectrum it actually works in and that gives a speed of 20 gigabits per second that is very interesting to know. Now, if we move on, let us talk about the various bands of 5G. It works in three bands primarily, low band and mid band and also high band. Every band has its own pros and cons. If we talk about low band, the pros are it is great promise, greatly promising in terms of coverage. That means it has a high coverage. It can cover a larger area and the speed of internet is also good and data exchange is also very nice. But the maximum speed is limited to only 100 megabytes per second. This is the consequence. Mid band spectrum, for pros, we can see that it has higher speed as we compare to the low band. But cons are the limitations are there in terms of coverage. It will cover a less area and the penetration of signal will not be very deep. Okay. Then comes the high band spectrum. Pros is it is providing us the highest speed as we compare the three bands but it is extremely limited when it comes to coverage and signal penetration strength is also not very impressive so these are the pros and cons we had to uh, you know know about now if we talk about the current scenario with respect to band allocation now if we talk about the 700 megahertz band it is good for suitable for the areas which have high density that means there are many users of the service and that needs to be ensured that more and more people get connected, more and more entrepreneurial people get connected, commercial people get connected. Data network and consumer led service both are suitable in this particular megahertz, 700 megahertz span. Then if we talk about the current scenario, it has the second highest amount of total bits. That is rupees 39,270 crore, second highest. Then we come to 3300 megahertz band in which the highest amount of bid has been given to at rupees 80,590 crore. And if we talk about 26 gigahertz millimeter band, then for 5G application, this particular gigahertz is really good. And private networks on pri uh, private networks when it comes to 5G can also work very well when it comes to this band and it has been the third highest amount it has received the third highest amount of rupees 14,709 crore let's move on and talk about the next one that is 1800 megahertz now 1800 megahertz wave and this is the only megahertz wave the bidding price for which was breached others were sold at the base price but the reserve price got breached for this particular megahertz. Why? Because here the competition is very high with respect to the Uttar Pradesh East Telephony. Because Uttar Pradesh East Telephony can work really well with 1800 megahertz airwave and 
in if we talk about uttar pradesh east telephony then the highest number of smartphone users are found over here over 100 million cell phone connections over 100 million cell phone connections are found in uttar pradesh east so in order to capture this particular market it has been done that most of the competition took in that particular megahertz now who has emerged as the highest bidder first of all we have to know that it was india's biggest ever spectrum auction earlier it was thought out that only three days is, uh, are needed to complete the auction but it took seven days and it wound up on monday and bid upward of rupees 1.5 lakh crore was registered highest bidder has been reliance geo it acquired almost half of the airwaves and it allocated rupees 88000 crores for it now only one reliance geo has been the only one to have acquired spectrum in the 500 megahertz band that is to capture the smartphone um, you know smartphone region customer led services as reliance geo is very aggressive and tenacious towards its customers when it comes to monopolizing the market it has done so and among the four i am talking about reliance geo vodafone bharti airtel and adani okay let us move on and talk about geo now why uh, is this going to be a game changer for geo first of all geo will get a significant head start over its competitors as it is the only bidder to get the you can say the coveted 700 megahertz ban and that is a very important point to make over here that already geo has monopolized the market with respect to internet 4g internet and now 5g for that it will also get a head start bharti airtel has not acquired an, any spectrum in the 700 megahertz band we will not talk about vodafone but adani wanted to only uh, have its own private network solution for business verticals like airports and other infrastructural facility for consumer service it is not getting uh, it is not getting into the spectrum bidding okay remember that let us move on and talk about this picture you can see the division over here this is from indian express you can go and see it there also moving on let us talk about why did it fetch a higher price as i told you three days auction uh, was basically predicted by analysts and also said that uh, it might we might not receive as much as they have received now the government now a total of 51.2 gigahertz of spectrum was sold of the total 72 gigahertz that was set up for grabs that is close to 71 percent has already been sold assumption was there that 700 megahertz band might not find any takers because back when it was auctioned in 2016 and 2021 there were no takers for 700 megahertz why because the price was so high it was asked by the uh, people who were in the auction to slash the price by even 90 percent so this was the level of price but what did the government do it slashed 40 percent of the price okay and in the latest auction we see that 600 megahertz band was not sold okay moving on now globally why the 700 megahertz uh, was actually it it was grabbed by reliance geo why because globally the 5g ecosystem is very well developed in the 700 megahertz band because of its coverage it can cover uh, the coverage area can be from 6 to 10 kilometers so it is a high coverage so 800 megahertz to 2500 gigahertz spectrum band if we talk about this as well there has been an increase in coverage of the 4g so whatever gaps are still there with respect to those spaces which do not receive 4g very well for that as well this particular band has been bought by different groups vodafone reliance and others so if we talk about the significance of 5g 5g is very significant from the perspective of three main connected service enhanced mobile broadband we have so many uh, india is one of those countries which millions and millions of people right now are using smartphones right so what happens that they need to get connected with the global world and for that they need more efficient internet system and mission critical communications that entail government infrastructure that entail those infrastructure which are necessary for the functioning of india integral to the security of india for that as well and internet of things when things get connected uh, with respect to their working like we all have alexa google at our homes when they get connected to different devices in order to ensure that human capabilities are enhanced in terms of getting more efficient services 
what happens that is called the internet of things when you uh, command alexa to do some task that is actually an internet of things so higher the a uh, frequency of cycle with respect to internet will be there uh, when we talk about 5g more will be the efficiency and we all know that we are standing at the cusp of fourth industrial revolution which entails having so many things such as cloud computing such as internet of things additive manufacturing that is 3d printing and many more so in order to enhance india with respect to fourth industrial revolution because we missed third industrial revolution so for that also it is needed for e governance now we see that the current government is trying to make digital india successful for e governance for ensuring that the governance is done through electronic mode so that it is more transparent and accountable internet of things is going to be very important and for that we need 5g now there are certain concerns with respect to health and environment when we talk about 5g radiation a small 2017 study trusted source showed that mobile phone use frequencies of 1.8 to 2.2 gigahertz now these frequency can cause tissue heating tissue heating is when the skin absorbs electromagnetic radiation and it leads to rising of the temperature of your body and brain although it is of short duration but it can lead to a longer term damage now again a 2017 research review found that emf electromagnetic frequency radiation from mobile phones are associated with glioma that is a type of brain cancer although not a lot of clarity has been developed on that when subsequent studies were done a 2019 animal study trusted source found that emfs from mobile phones are linked to dna damage in mice and rats another 2016 study showed that emfs of any frequencies can harm the nervous system of animals so these are the major concerns that we are talking about here but not a lot of clarity has been developed so we shall try to understand that when more conclusive study comes then we will discuss it in detail first of all we will talk about the challenges because india is a country that has high aspirations but also challenges to uh, overcome so low fiber uh, fiberization footprint means fiber connectivity in, in india is not very robust in order to ensure that 5g does not create more division between the haves and the have nots in the di digital arena we need to connect the areas the rural and urban areas uh, with more fiber connectivity hardware challenge is another challenge because many manufacturing um, equipments have been banned by the indian government which are very important for the 5g to work so make in india how do we develop the hardware that is important for 5g that is also another challenge critical infrastructure that is necessary for 5g to work land acquisition uh, how will uh, the uh, infrastructure be completed in a time uh, although it is supposed to roll out from october this year but how will we ensure that the infrastructure has been developed that is another challenge financial liabilities on consumers as we see that uh, the megahertz the different spectrums of um, the 5g are so costly it will eventually fall on to the consumers to pay for them per unit cost will increase and capital inadequacy as we see only few companies such as reliance and vodafone they have the capital to go for spectrums under 5g what about other con uh, other companies that want to enter the competition that is also an another issue we have to tackle way forward is pricing should be rationalized government aid and public aid should be given when we talk about digital economy digital india why because eventually it is a welfare concept if we have to ensure that each and every citizen benefits from digital india and the 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 era of covid showed us the importance of digitization so it's it should be ensured by the government that proper aid is given and rural urban gap should also be lessened that is also another uh, way forward that we have to look towards now if we talk about the question let us look at this particular question discuss the significance of 5g in india what are the major concerns challenges and solutions related to the roll out of 5g in india you can write this in 250 words okay 250 words will be enough so that's it thank you so much for watching stay engaged